Hi everyone, in this video I'll be sharing with you what the Cisco and F5 joint multi-site multi-pod solution is and how it can help you to deliver highly available applications. We'll then dive into some design scenarios and considerations that would lead you to one design over another. So first off, let's talk about Cisco ACI. Cisco ACI, or Application Centric Infrastructure, is a networking technology that allows you to integrate virtual and physical workloads into a programmable network fabric such that it's managed and monitored as a single entity. What this might look like is a combination of Cisco Nexus ACI switches in a spine leaf design with APIC, VMs, storage, external networks, as well as layer four through seven services, such as the F5 Big IP offering. Although each ACI fabric is stood up independently, they can be interconnected through a multi-site, multi-pod design, which we'll get into later in this video. Now let's talk about the F5 solutions involved. We'll be using both the F5 Local Traffic Manager, or LTM, and F5 DNS modules for this configuration. These solutions are offered on F5's Big IP platform and layered together to provide high availability. I say layered because the LTM takes care of local server redundancy, while the DNS solution takes care of multi-site redundancy. How this would look like is if we had two servers that are local to each other and need high availability, we could use LTM to represent them with a single IP address, and then LTM can send traffic to either one of them. If one server goes down, LTM can send all the traffic to the remaining server. Then if we had an additional site, we would leverage F5 DNS. The DNS for the application would be served by F5 DNS. Depending on the configuration, F5 DNS will send traffic to one site or another, ideally to a cluster of F5 LTM at either one of the sites. If a site were to go down, F5 DNS would know how to resolve the host name to the remaining site. Now it's common for Cisco ACI deployments to involve F5 Big IP, and there are some special considerations when it's a multi-site or multi-pod configuration. And so Cisco and F5 have worked together to give some guidance around what a combined solution should look like. I'm going to link some detailed documentation around that in the description of this video, but I'll also give you a high level idea of your options here. So there are multiple design options when it comes to integrating Cisco ACI and F5 in a multi-site, multi-pod manner. It comes down to how the traffic is steered through the big IP LTM. First, the ACI fabric can act as a gateway to your servers while you either use a source NAT or policy-based routing for return traffic to get to the big IP LTM. Second, big IP LTM can act as the gateway to your servers. And third, ACI can again act as the gateway to your servers and instead of using source NAT or policy-based routing, you would implement a VRF sandwich to steer return traffic. So for the first design, LTM is deployed hanging off of ACI with ACI being the gateway. Source NAT or policy-based routing will be used to control return traffic from the servers. What we'll see is traffic would come into the site through resolving on the F5 DNS and reach an LTM. LTM will send the traffic to the real server and the real server will send traffic back to the LTM because of source NAT configured on the LTM or policy-based routing configured in the ACI fabric. Now I'm gonna have a second site here built up with a similar topology and servers that match the first site. In this scenario, if using source NAT on the LTM, since there is an inter-site network, both sites can actually utilize real servers from the other site if needed, even if that's not the most ideal traffic path. This works because SourceNAT allows the real servers from the other site to get back to the LTMs at the original site. This is not quite an option when using policy-based routing, and there's more details to be found in the documentation on that, but essentially the policy-based route is only valid within the first site. For the second design, LTM will be the default gateway for the real servers. What we'll see is traffic would again come into the site through resolving on the F5 DNS and reach an LTM. LTM will send the traffic to the real server and the real server will send the return traffic back to the LTM at the site because it's configured as the gateway. In this scenario, even though there is the inter-site network, the servers from the other site cannot be used in the LTM pool since their gateways are configured as the LTM local to them. We would create traffic asymmetry and the return traffic would drop at the other site's LTM since it has no record of its state. For the third design, we'll use a VRF sandwich to steer traffic to and from the LTMs. So again, traffic would come into the site through resolving on the F5 DNS and reach an LTM, which will then send traffic onto the real servers. What's different here is that there will be an additional layer three hop added by the ACI fabric. 
This hop is going to be configured as the gateway and return path for the real servers. Now in this scenario, although there is an inter-site network, the servers from the other site cannot be used in the pool at the other sites. The reason for this is because the servers will have a default gateway of the added layer 3 hop. This would force traffic back through their local LTM and that would be an asymmetric traffic flow. That local LTM would have no record of that traffic flow and drop that return traffic. So hopefully this has given you an idea of your design options and considerations when it comes to designing your multi-site, multi-pod, Cisco ACI and F5 solution. Again, there's more details in the links below and feel free to drop your questions in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, hit subscribe if you wanna see more and otherwise we'll see you on the next one.